Alright, so here we've got a PIC32, a crazy motor driver, and a crazy motor. Uh, the crazy motor has actually what it has been removed from an old ball mouse. That is the uh, encoder attached there from the old ball mouse with a little bit of circuitry that I copied and then adjusted for 3.3 uh, volts. And we have the pin just fell off and I was planning on soldering that and I should have done that anyways. Okay, round two. Let's try this again. I soldered it up. So no more falling pins. Okay, what we have is a mouse encoder disk and a little bit of its hardware and some circuitry to make it run on 3.3 volts instead of 5 like it was originally attached to a pretty cheap uh, toy motor I guess is what it's called or a hobby motor and a PIC32 and a crazy motor driver which I've described in detail it doesn't work with PWM very well so I've been experimenting with some other uh, uh, techniques and what do we have? If you turn the shaft it tries to resist its motion so tries to return to where it was. I don't know if it's visible on this camera, but that's what it does. You can probably hear it's squealing a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't work with PWM because that's just a little bit too fast for it. But anyways, there you go. So on the oscilloscope we can see the bottom trace is one side of the motor driver. So increasing as I turn away. Hey, I've got really long wires. I can do this right here. Uh, so as I turn away from the position that it wants to stay in, it increases the power. And I think it sounds like bagpipes, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, so there you go. Now, after you pass 50% power, you get some weird effects. And uh, I was exploring what those effects are um, on uh, by changing to pulse width modulation instead of this technique, and I wrote a big log entry on that. Um, but anyways, I think this thing is rated for about three volts, and the power supply is 12 volts. So realistically, in most of my purpose is I probably won't be using more than 33% power anyways, which is lower than 50%, so we don't get that weird effect that right there. Okay, so that is the system. Again, if I turn it away, it tries to return. And what else? I guess that's it. Uh, down here you can see the LEDs control um, the green one indicates that there's a change in the pulse, whether it changes from high or to low. Um, the red one indicates left, and the yellow one indicates right. And uh, there you go. So, again, there you have it. Now I'll switch to pulse width modulation and it takes a second for it to load, so I won't make you sit through that. I thought I'd get you a close-up of the encoder disk. This is about as good a focus as this thing has, so, but you can see the slots in the disk. And uh, maybe if I... Oh, too much shading. Okay, well, I can't coordinate that right now, but... Uh, anyways, so now we've switched to pulse width modulation. And it has to be really slow for this motor driver chip. Um, so, anyways... Now we get, and do the same thing if I switch one way or the other. Let's see, let's do it that way. Okay, you can see those pulses are, uh, that one looks pretty much identical to a really low power in the other method. But as I start to increase the power, you get this really weird effect. Look at that voltage. The bottom trace again is the one that we're looking at. Uh, it has a nice spike at the beginning and then all of a sudden it drops down way low. 
and uh, so I did some experimenting and uh, the upper trace is now added um, that is actually the output from the power supply itself so what's happening is the as I understand it anyways the motor draws so much current that the power supply can't support it and uh, it's dropping down to about 6 volts instead of uh, 12 that it's set for. Um, so I have this capacitor here that is just kind of a random choice that I grabbed, one of my bigger ones. Uh, so I thought I'd see if uh, uh, I don't know what I was just going to say, but that one was the one that I chose in the very early stages of this project and uh, I think what's happening is, is that guy uh, is basically what's responsible for it looking pretty clean. It's not clean clean, but I never noticed the effect before um, at small pulse widths, but then once the pulse width increases, then that capacitor is not able to hold charge, and I think that's where I, the uh, power supply stops, starts dropping out. And uh, as we increase the power, uh, which means that I'm pushing really hard on the shaft of the motor, then all of a sudden it seems to drop way down. Uh, I mean, not way down, but I mean, it's then the power on the motor kind of stops. Like, it doesn't have that effect anymore, the strength. Um, very bad explanation, but there's a big log entry on it anyways. Uh, let's see what else look at what the uh, LEDs look like here with the uh, pulse width modulation instead. Notice the green one doesn't flicker as much because it's only pulsing twice per each um, per each pulse width modulation cycle because uh, basically what it does is it loads the pulse value whether it's high or low so it only triggers at the edge. So in the last video you could see that it was pulsing quite a bit because we had a lot more pulses going on. Now we just have, you know, we got one pulse here, pulse change here, we got another pulse change here, and another pulse change here. Um, and yeah, I didn't zoom in or anything so you, the other video you could see there were it was full of pulses at this point but they were really skinny whereas now we've got one really wide pulse so the old old as far as this video the old method was um, I think it's called pulse density modulation so what it does is it increases the frequency it used really skinny pulses but it increases the frequency of those pulses so in this case we have, say it's just a power level of 1 between there and there, and if I increase it more than say this power level of 2, it squishes those together in the same pulses. Whereas pulse density modulation would take, if you're back to power level 1, it would spit another pulse right in the middle of those two instead of adding it to the, to the um, end of each of these ones. So there you have it. Um, so see that log entry, it gives a pretty good explanation of why I think this is happening. Uh, and I don't know, I guess that's it. Okay, now we'll go back to here, see how it's resisting. So I'm turning it and it's trying to go back to the original position. And uh, this was just kind of a worst case scenario experiment. I've worked with much higher quality DC motors before uh, with encoders built in and uh, this is this is quite literally the wheel from the inside of an old mouse. Uh, the kind of mouse with the ball in it. <laughs> if anybody even remembers those. Um, so it's pretty low resolution and the motor is pretty low quality, it's got like a snapping action that I can't demonstrate now because it's powered up, but it snaps from 
about six different positions between a full rotation and uh, that effect is kind of noticeable too with this um, but you can't see it right now because it's trying to hold a position that it was already snapped into <laughs> alright I don't know I think that's it